So threading in programming. Traditionally, a lot of us think of a processor in a device, and we think that this processor can kind of take one input after another, which isn't a wrong way of thinking, and gives a certain output. In the order it receives the inputs in, roughly. So some kind of process goes on in the processor. Now, back in the really old days, this is true. It would receive things in order and execute them in order. But processors have gotten a lot more advanced in the past 20, 30, 40 years. And now we can have a processor. And inside of that processor, we can kind of divide it up into sections, two, four, six, eight, whatever it is. And each section has what's called a thread. And now these threads can each perform a bit of work on an input, and they can each give out an output pretty much at the same time. And what you can do on the processor is you can give priority to a certain thread, like this one or this one, if you so wish. So that's how processors have changed. And what does that mean for threading? Well, let's say you have your app that you've created, lovely, beautiful UI on your app. And you want this UI to always be responsive. You don't want the user to know the process is working hard. So what you can say is over to your mobile processor, I want my UI to go on this thread that is very, very important. So that thread will always be given priority. Then let's say you have another thread that has the lowest priority. So you only want this one to run when this one doesn't need a lot of resources. And for that one, for this low priority thread, we can assign it things like going out to the internet, getting stuff, writing data, I don't know, various other things, telephony, whatever it is. Maybe not telephony, it's a bit of a false example. But internet and data, definitely. And threading is a way of you writing software so that when you go out to the internet, this goes on what we call a background thread, which has a lower priority. And then when you want to update the display, this goes on the foreground thread. So the thread with a higher priority. Now, what you have to be careful of is that generally speaking in programming, the foreground thread cannot really talk to the background thread. And if I try, and let's say I want to update my UI, and then I call that update code from a background thread, I am going to have an issue because UI thread normally gets updated on the foreground. And if I run it from the background thread, the background thread, when it tries to, let's say, update a button or a bit of text, it doesn't know, because remember, it can't communicate with that thread, what I'm talking about. So we get a horrible crash. So when you're writing programs, you need to be aware of what thread you're currently on, what thread you want things to happen on. So let's say, in a real world example, I have a background thread, and that is getting stuff from the internet. This is a typical case. Then once I've got that stuff after five, 10 seconds, I want to come over here, and I want to give that stuff to the foreground thread. And then the foreground thread can update my screen or my user interface. Because remember, if we try to do it this way, we get a crash.